Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, The Real Arctic versus the Imaginary Arctic of Climate Scientists. The news is full of stories about ice apocalypse, desperate scientists, potential tipping points, more apocalypse, Arctic melting faster than Antarctic, Arctic ice vanishing. Wow, this sounds really bad. We better check it out and see what's going on for ourselves. According to data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado, Arctic sea ice extent is in the normal two standard deviation range, and it's also higher than 2006. 2006 was the summer with the recent highest summer minimum. Arctic sea ice is also growing very rapidly too. The green shows the increase in ice since the first of the month. This doesn't exactly look like an apocalypse to me. In fact, it looks pretty normal. And what about these scientists who are desperate about Greenland? And then there's Greenland, which could contribute as much as 20 feet of sea level rise if it melts. Let's look at Greenland. According to scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute, Greenland is gaining ice at a faster rate than normal, but not quite as fast as last year's record ice gain. That doesn't really sound like an apocalypse either. This is the current view of a scientific research station in the center of the Greenland ice sheet. The scientists are buried in snow and it's very cold. Temperatures there have not gotten above freezing for over five years. I'm pretty sure that ice doesn't melt at temperatures below freezing. And what about Antarctica? Major climate report warns of rapid change, potential tipping points. November 3rd, 2017. Much of the new science that we've seen coming out in the last few years is suggesting that things are changing faster and to a greater extent than we thought, Hayhoe said, pointing to evidence that the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica are melting and sea levels rising faster than expected. Well, let's look and see if Catherine Hayhoe is telling us the truth. According to NASA, Antarctica is gaining ice, not losing it. That means that Antarctic ice is causing sea level to fall, not rise. And satellites show the temperatures in Antarctica have not changed over the last 40 years. I've done quite a few videos about Catherine Hayhoe. She has a con pretty consistent pattern of being wrong about everything. What about her co-workers, other climate scientists? Let's look at their history of predictions. In 2008, Norway's top Arctic expert predicted that the Arctic polar cap may disappear that summer. Also in 2008, Canada's top Arctic expert predicted that the North Pole would be ice-free that summer. Ten years ago this week, NASA's top Arctic expert predicted that the Arctic would be ice-free by 2012. And Mark Ceres from the National Snow and Ice Data Center said, the Arctic is screaming. Also ten years ago, the Navy's top Arctic expert predicted the Arctic would be ice-free by 2013. He was slightly more conservative than NASA's expert, and Professor Wadhams from Cambridge University said, in the end, it will just melt away quite suddenly. And what about Nobel laureate Al Gore? Well, he predicted in 2009 that the Arctic would be ice-free by 2014. In 2008, NASA's top climate expert James Hansen, echoing work by other scientists, said that in five to ten years, the Arctic will be free of sea ice in the summer. Well, that's now. And Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, said, Dr. Hansen was right. We recognize him as a climate prophet. Let's look at one of climate prophet James Hansen's other predictions. In 1988, he predicted that lower Manhattan would be underwater between 2008 and 2018. I'm pretty sure that didn't happen. Experts continue to insist that the ice is disappearing, though. Let's have a look at that and see if it's true. This is the current ice thickness map from the Danish Meteorological Institute. And this is their same map from the same date in 2007. Let's flip back and forth between the 2007 map and the current map. This is 2007, this is 2017, 2007, 2017. You can see that the thick ice has expanded way out into the East Siberian Sea over the last 10 years. The ice is growing very rapidly, not disappearing. In 2009, President Obama's science star said that we were not only going to lose ice in the summer, but we we're going to lose it in the winter, too. If you lose the summer sea ice, there are phenomena that could lead you not so very long thereafter to lose the winter sea ice as well. 
And if you lose that sea ice year round, it's going to mean drastic climate change all over the hemisphere. Wow, that sounds really bad. So scientists are convinced that the polar ice caps are falling apart and that it's going to cause drastic climate change. Let's go back in time 80 years now. December 17, 1939. Greenland's glaciers melting, says scientists. Stockholm, Sweden, December 16. All the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting, declared Professor Hans Allman, Swedish geologist. It may, without exaggeration, be said that these glaciers, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. October 13, 1940. Ice in Arctic melting rapidly. Washington. The ice of the Arctic Ocean is melting so rapidly that more than one-third of it has disappeared in 50 years. That's the conclusion that may be drawn from the remarkable drift of the Russian icebreaker set of last winter. So temperatures in the Arctic must have been really warm around 1940. And if we look at NASA temperature data, it actually was very warm around 1940. The yellow line shows measured temperatures at the capital of Iceland. And the blue line shows the temperatures which NASA releases to the public. Notice how they've massively cooled the 1940s to make that warmth disappear. NASA is trying to erase this for a warm period around 1940 when glaciers were facing the possibility of a catastrophic collapse and the ice in the Arctic was melting very rapidly. I wonder why they're doing this. Let's look at what the NASA scientists are hiding. The blue line is the unaltered temperatures at the capital of Iceland. You can see this cyclical pattern of warmth in the 1940s, cold around 1980, and warm again now. And the red line shows us the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, which is an ocean circulation pattern. You can see it's almost perfect correlation between the AMO and temperatures in Iceland. What this graph tells us is that Arctic temperatures are controlled by ocean circulation patterns, not by carbon dioxide. That's the last thing NASA wants you to know. President Eisenhower warned us about this in his farewell speech in 1960. Akin to, and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in our military-industrial posture, has been the technological revolution during recent decades. In this revolution, research has become central. It also becomes more formalized, complex, and costly. A steadily increasing share is conducted for, by, or at the direction of the federal government. Today, the solitary inventor tinkering in a shop has been overshadowed by task forces of scientists and laboratories and testing fields. In the same fashion, the free university, historically the fountainhead of free ideas and scientific discovery, has experienced a revolution in the conduct of research. Partly because of the huge costs involved, a government contract becomes virtually a substitute for intellectual curiosity. For every old blackboard, there are now hundreds of new electronic computers. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever-present, and is gravely to be regarded. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific technological elite. Well, that's exactly what happened. President Eisenhower was quite a visionary. We got into a situation during President Obama's presidency where incompetent and dishonest scientists took charge of government policy. This is totally unacceptable and it's dangerous for the rest of us. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.